On November 17, 2019, Gotabaya Rajapaksha got elected as the president of the island nation of Sri Lanka. With significant tax cuts and reduced revenue, the Gotabaya government ignored international monetary funds' warnings and directed the central bank to print currency in record amounts. 2020 brought in the COVID pandemic and Sri Lanka's billion-dollar tourism sector suffered massively. In April 2021, Kotabaya announced that the island nation will only allow organic farming and banned the import of chemical fertilizers. As the economy suffered due to failed policies and pandemic, the mandatory organic farming and fertilizer ban angered farmers. Fast forward to March of 2022, the debt-ridden nation's inflation soared to 21.5%. As the economy dwindled, leading to acute shortages of food, fuel and essentials, the anti-government sentiment began picking up steam at a lightning speed. By April 2, 2022, the mass public resentment and condemnation forced the government to declare a national emergency. On May 9, the heightened economic crisis led to Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha's resignation. On May 12, Kotabaya convinced Vikram Singh to take up the premiership in order to curb the growing unrest. There were still demands for resignations of Kotabaya and other leaders with pressure now on Vikram Singh. As the crisis worsened with ordinary citizens struggling with a continued shortage of food, fuel and medical supplies throughout May and June, Go Kota Go echoed throughout the country. On July 9th, lakhs of people marched towards Colombo and occupied the presidential palace. Kotabaya fled while Vikram Singh promised to step down to make way for an all-party interim government. Gotabaya, still in hiding, informed the Speaker that he will resign on July 13th. The uprising against the government is more of resentment against the family. Gotabaya Rajapaksha and his brothers are third-generation politicians of the Rajapaksha clan. The family's arrays in politics began in pre-independent Sri Lanka. The tree begins with Don David Rajapaksha. Appointed the Vidane Arachi, akin to a feudal lord, Don David had quasi-judicial powers in colonial Sri Lanka. One of his three sons, Don Matthew Rajapaksha, got elected to the state council in 1936. Matthew died in 1945 and in the resulting by-election, his younger brother and the founding member of Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Don Alvin Rajapaksha, won without a contest. Don Alvin, along with Matthew's son, Lakshman, fought in the parliamentary elections of 1947 and was joined by Matthew's other son, George, in 1960. Henceforth, the Rajapakshas were representatives in the country's legislature for the next 30 years. Their presence in the political corridors was cemented with Don Alvin's son, Mahinda Rajapaksha's victory in 2004. Under the presidency of Chandrika Bandar Naike, Mahinda was appointed the Prime Minister. A year later, Mahinda contested the presidential elections and won. He then stayed in power till 2015. His greatest legacy is his aggressive war against the LTTE, which greatly elevated his status within the Sinhala Buddhist community. He ended the decades-long civil war with the Tamil Tigers. However, for the global audience, the war was an atrocious event full of human rights violations, an investigation into which Mahinda never agreed upon. During his presidency, the country also strengthened ties with China. Next on the tree is Mahinda's younger brother, Gotabaya. With no political experience, Gotabaya came from a military background. Throughout Mahinda's presidency, Gotabaya was in charge of the army and police. Nicknamed the Terminator by his own family, Gotabaya was the executioner, the defence secretary in Mahinda's cabinet. In 2009, he was the one who led the brutal crackdown on separatist Tamil rebels. Ten years later, in 2019, after the deadly Easter bombings, riding on nationalist sentiments mixed with the appeal of a strong man, Gotabaya won the majority vote and became the president. With the pandemic right at the door, many blamed his leadership for triggering the economic crisis. Another brother, Basil Rajapaksha, is an important branch of the tree. The finance minister in Gotabaya's cabinet, he was infamously called Mr. 10% in reference to commissions he allegedly took while in power. After the economic crisis caused mass unrest in the country, he was forced to resign from parliament to save face for his brother's presidency. Yet another brother who was part of the cabinet and forced to resign is Gotabaya's eldest brother, Chamal. Minister of Irrigation in Gotabaya's cabinet, Chamal, was involved in the disastrous ban on chemical fertilizer imports. The tree branched into the fourth generation of Rajapaksas. George Rajapaksa's daughter Nirupama held the post of Deputy Minister of Water Supply and Drainage during Mahinda's presidency. Chamal's son was also a member of parliament. Mahinda's eldest son Namal was handed the sports ministry portfolio under his father's prime ministership. Mahinda's younger son, a formal naval officer, Yoshita served as the chief of staff. 
This fourth generation of Rajapaksas are inheriting not only the family's political legacy, but also the economic and political mess, along with distrust and resentment of the people. It is going to be a Herculean task to turn the tide in their favour and salvage their family name. It looks like the end of the Rajapaksha empire. But there is no president, no prime minister, no government at the time. They, they have been chased away by the people's power. That's the main thing, important thing.